Okay, so um, for our uh, exercise this morning, we're going to be using two objects. Uh, one, the, the harp, the lira, the harp, the Babylonian harp, which is quite a complex object. It's got a couple of layers and different textures. And we're going to, but we're going to start with something a little bit easier. First of all, um, just so we understand the workflow uh, of things. The harp happens to have quite a few different um, objects in it, uh, while the other, uh, the, the first one we want to start with is going to be a lot simpler. It's going to be just a single object. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up this mask. This mask, uh, can you see my screen okay? Yep, I can. Yeah, so this is from Sketchfab, and it is a mask uh, of one of the gods in Babylon, and it's called Dagon, uh, wow. that god. And uh, incidentally, in Unreal, I mean, in Sketchfab, it happens to be downloadable. It does not have that many um, uh, polygons, wow. um, and uh, therefore the file ought to be pretty small. So uh, as I go through the download option here, you notice it gives me a couple of options. FBX is a preferred uh, option. So once this file is downloaded, by the way, I'm showing you all of that on a Mac, but it, it's the same on a PC, the same software mm -hmm. uh, across. So it really doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Um, the workflow is exactly the same. Okay. So... Yes, I can share the whole entire screen. Okay, so uh, with that downloaded, what I do is I verify that I've indeed gotten the FBX file. And if I double click on it, I've got an FBX viewer, a simple FBX viewer that doesn't give me the texture, but it just gives me the object to make sure that it is what I'm, I'm wanting to use. Uh, so that looks correct. And I've also gotten um, uh, the base color. Um, yeah, that's fine. The metallicness of it, it should be pretty much all white. Uh, whenever it's white, it means that it, it needs to be reflective. There are some areas that are less reflective here. Uh, the normal means the bump, it means how, how 3D it sticks out as far as the texture itself, not the object. So, for example, uh, these little details, you can see my mouse, right? Yes, yes, I can. Yeah. So these little details will stick out of the object rather than being smooth. Now, this is better to do those kinds of textures as a normal file rather than in the FBX itself, because the FBX file will then need to have a lot more triangles, a lot more polygons to replicate those little bumps. It's a lot easier to do it in a JPEG image or a PNG image rather than in a... Um, so you kind of want to keep your FBX file as simple and as small as possible and do all the minute bumps uh, in um, an image file. And then there's a roughness aspect. Now the roughness dictates how detailed the, the metal shininess will end up being. Now, the first thing I do is obviously as this game is gonna have quite a lot of objects is to simplify it as much as possible. Now I'm quite happy that my um, FBX file is quite tiny and our meg is very decent, but I'm not happy with those big PNG files. So yeah, what I'm going nice. to do is open them up and then convert them all into JPEGs. Okay, out of PNG. Okay, so, uh, right. So it would be exporting them over uh, to JPEGs. Now I can do this manually here, or I can take it into Substance Painter and uh, um, I don't need to worry about shrinking things in, in Substance Painter. I can do the full resolution and then whatever comes out of Substance Painter, that I can worry about shrinking, right? Mm. So if I did not have to do anything, I didn't have, if I did not want to go through Substance Painter at all, I wanted to go straight from um, this FBX to Unreal, I would shrink those PNGs and convert them into JPEGs. 
Um, typically, the base color, I keep it at a pretty high DPI. Um, but everything else, the metalness, the normal, and the roughness, I can reduce that to a DPI of 72 or so and make that file really tiny and not, not have to bother with it. But uh, for, for this experience, let's go ahead and just take it into Substance Painter. From Substance Painter, we're going to export uh, the new materials. We're going to compare the current material that it suggests uh, to what we can create, we can embellish in Substance Painter and see if uh, we can do it even better than, than the, the recommended layers that it has, okay? okay. So, uh, so far, so good? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I perfect. do have a question. Uh, yeah. When you sent the uh, LAMSU, I yeah. was able to do the mapping for the different layers that came with that. Yes. I wasn't entirely sure what the target location for the mapping was for the layers that were marked albedo. Yeah, albedo is the same as base color. Okay. So some companies call it albedo, some companies call it uh, 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 base color or just color. Okay. I so, wasn't sure if that was a standardized yeah. thing or not. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so typically European companies uh, will call it Albedo, um, mm -hmm. uh, but England and the US and Australia calls it base color. So it's it's just a Latin word for base color. <laughs> um, all right, so in here, I'm just going to go ahead and drag my FBX file in. It asks me what is the image resolution that I would like my layers to be. So uh, mm -hmm. I can push this up to 4K um, right. per layer, but I don't need to because it's not gonna be that big of an object. So 2K uh, is fine. I do need to add some uh, mesh normals though, uh, which ends up being those, um, those colors. Uh, so this is under here and it's those four PNGs, all right? So, uh, so when you do this, you import just the FBX and then it will ask you for any extra layers and then you bring those layers in. And when you press OK, you would have just the mask mm -hmm. correctly. And if you go under projects, you're going to see all four of the, um, of the layers pretty much. Mm -hmm. So typically what I do, whatever it has as a layer here, I just delete it. I create a brand new, not, um, not a paint layer, but uh, sorry, not this kind of layer, but the paint layer. The paint layer allows you to just drag and drop um, those aspects directly into here. So I'm going to, to take uh, the first one, which is a base color and just drag it into base color here. Now, uh, notice that we have a height. So height is uh, the same as normal. Uh, or you can use it as normal here. So I drag the normal into this. And notice right away, you can see the depth. depth of things. Yeah, if I turned it off, it would be flat. If I add it, now it's bumpy. Right there. And that is not by polygons. That is just by an image, which is pretty cool. And it, it's obviously saving on, on polygon counts and on your GPU calculating all of this. <coughs> so for roughness, we're going to drag this into here. And now for metallic, we're going to drag this one over here. And right away, now we got something pretty realistic looking. Yeah, it looks great. And, um, and the texture and all is, uh, is pretty good. Really happy with how that comes out. Let's check the back. Uh, okay, yeah, that's gonna be most likely stuck on a wall anyway, so um, totally fine. Wonderful. Um, so this is one 
layer and what we're going to call it is probably something like uh, original uh, layer which we can turn off and apply other kind of materials to it later on okay mm -hmm. so just so we have a we keep a file with multiple with multiple layers just like photoshop right uh yeah. let's go ahead and create another layer uh for this layer what i'm going to do is i'm going to still um no, I'm going to start now looking at all the materials that I usually have. Um, and if I apply gold on here, mm. eh, I'm not so convinced about this. Um, so I'm going to delete that and try different, different textures. Um, as I apply those, I have quite a lot of things that it does. It does a normal, and I can turn on and off normal. Mm -hmm. uh, it does a metallic uh, layer. It does a roughness layer. And sometimes you want to turn off certain things and turn on only other things. So this now, using this gold flake, will give me uh, some slight defects in the gold, which is natural. I like that and a uh, nice reflection. And uh, uh, what we can do now with this is combine two things. So combine this metal that is probably more detailed uh, and more accurate coming from, uh, from Substance Painter. And then we can add, uh, so, what we're doing is that we're choosing color, we're choosing roughness, we're choosing metal, metallic, we're not using normal, we're not using height. And then I'm going to add another uh, function. And on this one, I only want height. So I only want normal. And what I'm going to do is take this normal that, that comes originally and dump it in. And now mm -hmm. we've got the texture of the original uh, plus the material of substance. So it's a combination of those two. I see. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, it does. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that look. So, um, we can dial this down if we want. We can dial the amount of, uh, of thickness down if we want. Uh, we can actually exaggerate the height. Mm -hmm. uh, and be, being a layer, just like in Photoshop, I can turn those off and turn this on and decide what is better between those two. And I can actually merge the two together uh, by saying I want a little bit I want a little bit of the new gold uh, superposed with the old gold. This is the old gold. Mm -hmm. This is the new gold. Um, so eventually you end up doing a mix of uh, the original stuff that they send plus, uh, plus what you create in substance to create your own original material or your own original content. But um, I don't know if you've played much with um, particles in here. No, I haven't. Um, so what particles does is I'm gonna add an extra layer and I believe it's a drawing layer. What particles does is that you choose a material and then it will apply a, with a random seed different aspects. Like this is kind of like a crack. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe wow. a bit exaggerated there. Uh, we don't want that. Um, or uh, like uh, an artistic uh, squiggly line. Um, 
typically I like to use something like a, like a bullet wound or something that, uh, so especially from the side, um, or it could be used as if it was rain that had fallen on it. And uh, you can choose then uh, like, uh, like a rust color and apply rust on it that way. So the amount, the strength of these lines is all determined by those bars over here. Um, the brush setting. Yeah. So currently there's no material to it, so it looks white, but in reality, uh, you might want, um, maybe we're looking for a rust color and uh, there we go. So now it's a rust with that material. And now we go back to the, uh, we go back to the, it's not brushes, but it's particles. And then we can apply some of those in here. So you see now this yeah. really does look very, very authentic looking. Mm -hmm. Now all of those things that you end up adding, that's too much. Uh, that's too much. So how about around the eyes? This looks like a Venetian mask now. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's bleeding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got a nose bleed. That's nice. And you know, you, the funny thing is that you can never, it, it, because it's a random seed, you can never get it to do exactly the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. OK, so this looks like rain might have dropped down and it would have accumulated and rusted down here. Mm -hmm. Now, this is another effect called sand, sand, sandstorm. And it's very minute. Yeah. But you can see the little ab abrasiveness that he has added to this. And that would be a splat. You can naturally change the angle of all of that and, uh, um, and so on. Let's try the crack. So this almost looks like a bullet wound. Oh, it's like it got dropped on his nose for a second. Yeah, this might work nice right here. Yeah. yeah. So all of these that we're adding here um, end up being uh, uh, complex in Substance Painter. But at the end of the day, Substance is going to only output, again, just JPEG images. And it'll combine all of that into a normal into a base color, a metallic, and a roughness. That's the only thing you need. Um, while here it is all layers, mm -hmm. can we add just uh, maybe a little bit of a vein color on the nose? So at the end of the day, it ends up being those defects that you're adding on metal that will make it look even more realistic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, uh, as we're planning on doing something that would be set in a time period, yeah, would we be aiming to potentially reduce the weathering on some of the objects that we might uh, have that may be made as if they were third artifacts? So um, I would assume because the Babylonian Empire ran for um, quite a few years, uh, starting with Ur and starting with uh, Mesopotamia and so on, I would expect some of those artifacts to be not completely uh, degraded, but uh, uh, some might have uh, you know, some might look brand new, some might have a little bit of, uh, of stain to it. Um, and uh, the other good thing is that because those are layers, 
we can turn on and off um, the, the level of, uh, of degradation in Unreal later on. Mm. So uh, now that I'm pretty much done with this, let me go ahead and save this as a Substance Painter file so we can get back to those layers. Um, and this is called Dagon Mask. The file size in Substance is pretty big, kind of like uh, what you'd expect out of a Photoshop file because it needs to keep every layer and everything intact. The project file, yeah. Yeah. So that would be too big to bring into Unreal, especially if you have many objects. If it's the only object, that's fine. If you've got a lot more, that's no good. Now, there is a plugin that uh, converts Substance Painter content directly into Unreal very, very nicely. Um, I'm not gonna use it because I want the flexibility of changing different, uh, so, in, in maybe a temple for this god, we might have a dozen of these masks around. And I would want each of them to have a slightly different look. Uh, the, the, the FBX file would be the same, but the, the metalness or the, the, the texture or the painting or even the size of it will, will vary slightly. So. Okay. What, once I'm done with this, I will go over and do an export texture over here. Mm. Now, the export texture um, asks me what format do I want it best for. And uh, obviously, it's going to be for Unreal Engine. Um, and then by default, it chooses a PNG file, but I don't really need a PNG file. A JPEG is good enough for me. You remember when we did an import, we chose 2048 as a square resolution image. Right. So it, we don't need to worry about this anymore. It knows that it's a 2048 image and it's going to export those as such. So here, what I just need to do is click on export and uh, I can open the output directory and see the uh, files that it has done for me. And it's done these three, okay? So what I'm gonna do in my work directory of Dagon Mask, I'm going to create a new folder called Substance uh, uh, Textures. And then notice how these files are now so much tinier, mm -hmm. JPEGs are so much tinier than the PNGs that we were originally looking at. So all you need after that would be the textures files and then the original FBX. That's right, you got it, yeah. So now if I look at those images, if I look at this one, I don't even recognize where the face is, but I do see those mock of splatter that we have added. Um, if I look at the normal, the bumpiness, now I see the shape of the face. We really did not change much of the normal. Um, and if I look at the metal roughness, you can see that the metal roughness would have changed wherever we degraded the metal. Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, that file name is a little bit too long for, and, and this is just my personal preference. So what I tend to do is I rename, I, I tighten the file. So the word material, I'm going to erase. So it is, uh, so this is occlusion, way. roughness and metalness that it has combined into one, into one file. That's fine because Unreal, uh, uh, understands metalness to be one color, roughness to be another color, and occlusion to be another color. So combined together, I can get three different, three different aspects into one image. So now let's go ahead and create. Um, you're good so far, Jonathan. Um, I'm doing. I'm doing uh, good so far. Uh, had a couple of audio cutouts, but it's good. Okay, um, so let's go ahead now and uh, yeah, we're gonna save this. 
and uh, create a brand new Unreal project with nothing else in it. And then bring that in and see how it uh, how it operates. Okay. So just for the sake of it, we're going to use maybe um, a third person view so we can walk around the object and uh, um, and see how the reflection goes. So it's going to be a game. Uh, it's going to be third person. It's going to be we're not going to do ray tracing. We're going to call it. Dagoth. In the Bible, is Dagon with an M, mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, uh, Dagon mask for desktop. Okay, so we'll we'll get this loaded. The initial time you start a game, it uh, it takes yeah. So I'm just going to scale those icons down. I'm going to create a directory in here called uh, Dagoth Mask and put all those contents in here. Mm -hmm. So um, what we're going to do is bring both aspects in the, the original mask plus the original painting and then the new painting that we did in substance and have multiple masks in here uh, with those different layers on. So uh, I just need to drag this in here like that. And uh, I only, I do not want to import all. I don't want to import the materials that it thinks it needs to come with. I'm just going to import the, the, the 3D object uh, it's got a couple. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. Okay, so there's a Dagoth mask in substance in uh, in Unreal. Uh, the scaling is correct. Looking at those squares, sometimes the scaling is wrong, and then you get the object to be a tiny little square rather than uh, that typical view. You kind of want it to be uh, to be visible when you look at the full square here. Um, if it is too tiny, and that's, that's just because through Blender or through Substance Painter, whatever they use to import, they've, uh, let me show you an example. If I bring it in, oh yeah, uh, I need to delete it first. Uh, false delete, yeah, delete, okay. So if it's too tiny, you delete everything and then you bring it back in. And as you bring it back in, notice that you have a scale option here. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's too, too tiny, you can do a scale of 2 to 1 or 10 to 1. Sometimes when you bring something in, it's rotated sideways. Rather than being straight, it is flipped. Uh, when that happens, delete it and bring it back in and then click on force front x axis and it will rotate it back, back to normal. In this case, with, it understands that it's Blender. It understands the the unit, the file unit, which is in centimeters, and it's fine. So uh, typically, um, if you bring something in Blender and then you forget to type the unit number, that's when you can get something to be way too big or way too small when you bring it in. So here I've brought it at 2x the size. Now, if we go and, and view this, you'll see that now it's about twice the size that it was before, mm -hmm. which is fine. Yeah. Notice that it has created for me a material structure already. Okay. It knows that this object has one material and the material is called material, uh, which is not very helpful. Yeah. So I'm going to rename it uh to dagoth um underscore m typically in unreal uh, underscore t stands for a texture file underscore m stands for a, a material file um now the material needs to be composed and by the way if the material does not exist if it doesn't bring in any material that's fine. You can right click here and just create a new material. 
and then uh, select that within the mask blueprint. Exactly. So we actually need to create two materials for this uh, uh, for this mask, the original one and the one we did in substance. So we'll call it Dagoth, Dagoth 1. And then um, we'll create another material called Dagoth 2. Now, this is where the fun starts. Um, I'm going to go over to my substance here and then copy those three different textures into the file here. Now, the, the machine does not know what to do with those. And you cannot just drag these onto the mask. It won't know what to do with it. What you need to do is configure a material to take those textures. So to do that, you double click on a material. Uh, you follow me so far? No, no, no audio breaks or anything? Uh, Jonathan? Sorry, my yeah, you, the audio cut out for a moment. Uh, okay, you're following me so far. Uh, no problem. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so and so I've I have gotten to the point of uh, adding the texture samples and doing the connections. Okay, perfect. So typically here uh, I delete whatever the built-in parameter is, and I will do a right click and type texture sample and uh, copy and paste it three times. And then uh, choose the first one. And here, now you can drag this into, you can drag the color base into here, a link to the base color. This one will put the, whoops, will put, uh, okay, for this one, we'll drag the normal in that's it and for the third one we'll bring in so this is where it's interesting if you come out of substance painter it gives you one single image for occlusion roughness and metallic, metallic. so this is how it works occlusion is red roughness is green metallic is blue i see okay so you drag this to occlusion, you drag this to roughness, and you drag this blue to metallic. Notice how as soon as I connected the metallic one here, the texture changed over here. So if I take it off, it is bland. And as soon as I bring the blue aspect of this image into metallic, it becomes properly gold. Right. Yeah. And now as I save it, as I save it, my Dagoth one has the proper textures. However, my mask, oh, did I assign? Uh, I think you renamed the material, so that might. That yeah, might yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, there we go. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to this and see if it's all linked correctly. Yep. Save and. Okay, now if I look at my mask, it will have those components in. Mm -hmm. And the reflection and everything looks absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, what I'm going to do now is do a uh, rename this one. Uh, yeah, we can rename this one as mask one and uh, 
technically I, I I don't even need that. Technically I can keep it as mask and then and then select different textures for the same mask. Now let's bring in the second texture, the original texture, those PNG files, but I'm going to quickly convert those. Let's rename that without the material name. There we go. And then let us quickly save those file export as a JPEG. And I want it to be uh, about two megs should do long directory. I need it to be a little Dagoma. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Save this. So now I'm going from nine megabytes to 800 megs. Mm -hmm. um, metallic is export. That can be a very tiny file, a very tiny compressed JPEG. Yeah, that's fine. Um, my normal was 11 megs. Now this one with those details here, I do want to preserve them well. So I'll export it with JPEG, but without uh, too much quality loss. So that goes that still, yeah, from, from 11 megs to one meg and uh, and we still get good quality here, so that's fine. Okay, so metallic is done, base color is done. I'll just go ahead and delete the PNGs. Oops, I need my roughness done as well. File, export to JPEG. Okay, so we'll take those three drag them in here. And then Wow. Um, I made a mistake here because it's the same file name as these. So did it overwrite them? It overwrote it, yeah. Mm. So that's fine. We'll drag, we'll drag the original in and then we'll rename those as, so let's rename um, every time it sees mask, it needs to replace it with mask two underscore. Rename, there we go. So now we've got, so now we can drag those in and uh, that's good. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, you see how I have this as a second material. I created a blank material. Let me show you another way of doing this. Uh, you can take, the base color, right click on it, and then you can click on create material from it. Mm. And it will automatically link. Um, I'll just rename it now to underscore M. But yeah, it will automatically link at least the first image to the base color. So it, it saves you that, that uh, step, yeah. yeah. So, and then here you can cut and paste, whoops, you can just cut and paste multiple ones of these and then just replay. Uh, and then here we'll just search for mask two and we're looking for mask two normal. That one goes here. And then this one, it, we're searching for mask two. Uh, metallic, 
that one. The, notice that it hasn't combined those images like Substance Painter did efficiently. So um, you've got to still drag those in independently. So I've just done a copy and paste here. And now I'm searching for mask to roughness. And this roughness gets tied up here. I am, I like things a little bit neat. So it really doesn't make any difference in the code. Um, but visually it's appealing. There, so we'll save this. And now we have two different materials for the same mask that we can alternate back and forth. Um, well, thank yeah. you, I appreciate it. Uh, so, I do have a question. I'm not sure how much time you've got right now. Yeah. But uh, I, I saw that you had, uh, worked on the harp and yeah based on the resources that were in the folders for the harp yeah i'm i was a little unsure of what the process looked like for the mapping of those onto it yes because it's language. multiple objects and multiple uh, layers so mm -hmm. we can we can uh, uh you know dive right in and do the harp right right after this um okay. But with, with the mask here, I'll drag it in. Now, because we have it as a 2x, it is pretty big here, but I can shrink it back over here. So typically I would lock x, y, and z coordinates and then do a 0.5 and then it adapts itself to the size. Right. Nicely. Now, if I click on this mask, I can see that it's the Dago mask with the material Dago one. What I'm gonna do now is duplicate this. Let's make it, let's make it bigger, this one. And then I can choose a different material for this. So we'll do the Dago mask two for this one right here. And now we've got the same Text, uh, the same 3D file with two different textures. Now this is super efficient to the GPU because it only needs to memorize one or to load in its memory one 3D object and it just layers it with uh, two different materials and that hardly takes any GPU uh, power to do that. So essentially the preference is rather than creating a second um... A Correct. Instance or copy Correct. Of the yeah. Dagon mask object in the content browser. You simply use the same thing and choose a different material. Yes, and this is okay. extremely efficient program programmatically. It's extremely efficient for GPU load. But when you look at it, it's very different. This one looks older, maybe, uh, and this one looks newer, but with a couple of. Uh, we could say that these are. These are sacrificial uh, blood marks that they would put on them. I, I don't know. Uh, th this needs to be verified by historians. But uh, yeah, this could be marks of blood. But this definitely looks newer compared to that. Uh, that could be possibly positioned outside of the building and it gets weathered while this one. Um, yeah, so uh, good job here to Substance Painter for for having added those details and those platter marks here, um, while it's not, it's it's older on this one uh, mm -hmm. aspect. So if we were to play it, um, yeah, that's a, you can see very well the reflection in. In here, that works very well. Yeah, looks very good. Uh, 
the splatter that we did went right through the mask, it seems. There's a little dot hmm. there where the splatter was. Well, good thing it's on a wall. Yes. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and mind. let's go ahead and uh, use that same uh, environment and bring in the hop. Okay. Okay. So uh, I might as well save this. Okay. So for the hop. Um, the original file was a substance painter, right? Oh, it was a, was a blender file. Yeah, it's a blender file. Okay. So let's start right from the beginning. Let's start from blender itself and see what's going on here. Okay. In Blender, there's a lot of objects. As you click on them, you can see uh, them being highlighted. Forget about down here, right? But you can see them being highlighted here. So if I click on that, this, these are the strings. I might, I, right. I might as well rename them to strings. Uh, I don't need the camera. That's the camera angle here because uh, cameras are going to be done in Unreal. So I delete any layers that I don't need. Those circles, those are like the, the, the rings to hold the strings together. Uh, mm -hmm. In rendering, it doesn't even look good. So I'm going to even delete it. Uh, okay. What is this cube? So this is a wooden, I'll just call it <coughs> wood. Uh, what is this? These are pegs, tuning pegs. Okay, what is this? What is this? Okay, this is the, uh, we're gonna call this harp box, for lack of a better term. If we were to bring it in straight, there's all kinds of other things around it. Right. I don't know if you tried it, but it, yeah, there's all kinds of other things. And okay, this is the plane. I don't want it, so I'm gonna delete it. This is a lighting function. This is another lighting function. This is a sphere that goes around it that I don't need. I'm gonna delete it. So we got strings, we got pegs, we got the wood, we got the box. What is this? What is that circle doing outside there? We don't need that at all, delete. Uh, this is lighting. Yeah, this is lighting, we don't need that. This, what is this? Oh, the hot box has a few things. Okay, it's got this, which looks like, it's that little dot in the middle here. Okay, we'll leave it. Then we've got this, which is a front foot. Mm -hmm. What is this? That's the top. Yeah, we we'll call it cylinder. Front foot is here. What is this? Back foot. Let's see here, cube, cube one, that's the back foot. <coughs> These are the two arms. Mm -hmm. So notice I'm naming it into things that I can relate to. Right. This, we're going to call it face. These look like they are the eyes. Mm -hmm. so I can turn them on and off to make sure that this is indeed what I'm looking at here. So eyes, 
face, front. <coughs> now, I'm going around now to make sure that anything else that I have in here is deleted that I don't need because uh, it's going to cause havoc. What is this bit? So, so by deleting it, I don't see anything that is being erased. So I'll erase it. We got the strings that this, okay. So now that I'm happy with this, it's, it is a Blender file format. I'm going to go File, Export, and we're going to export it to the to an FBX file format. Okay. Um, Babylon Hop, and we're going to call it. Uh, I already exported it before. That's why it's already there. So I'm going to call it. Uh, The power is hard. Oh, there we go. Um, and export. So there it is here. It's 1.9 megs. I'll double click on it to view it and see that everything's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks good. I don't know what I did, but yesterday my export was eight megs. Uh -huh. And I must have deleted something that was obviously not visible and take, took a lot more polygons. And, uh, and now it's even smaller. So it's a good thing we're doing this because now the file is way tinier than it was before. Uh, the smaller the FBX, the better for the GPU. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the power is hop is less than two megs. I'm happy with that. Now, uh, I don't need Blender anymore. And I'll go ahead and open uh, Substance. Now, uh, in Substance, let's look at the textures that we're going to be using. Uh, by the way, yesterday I renamed them okay. uh, to something more relevant. So I have a hop wood. I've got the rope, I've got the relief in the front, I've got the gold, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use substances gold. I've got the eyes, um, the one side and the other side. So these are PNGs. They are 1.2 meg, eh, they're tiny enough, that's fine. Okay. Uh, anyway, whenever you bring something into Substance, you don't need to worry about compressing it, compressing the textures, because Substance is going to export the textures in in however compressed you want. Um, okay, so let's bring in the powers hub. Okay, now it asks me um, for materials. I'm going to add. I'm going to add all these as we just looked at over here. All right, so they are in. And you've got now the object with no with no texture on it at all. It's it's blank. Right. You remember when we did the mask, there was just one object 
now we've got a lot more than one object. <coughs> we've got this. Uh, so all of these are separate FBX files that are all combined into one, okay? Mm -hmm. So I like to rename them here as well. Uh, so I know what I'm talking about. This is the head. This is the top front tube. That is, I think it's one side versus the other. Okay, that's one side here. And then this is the other side. Okay, so that'd be left and right. What is this? That's the eyes. Okay, what is this? That's the, how do we call it? Uh, tuning pegs. What about this one? That is the, that is that uh, relief. That's this drawing that goes there. Mm -hmm. What is this? Strings. And that's it. Okay, so we've got all our objects here. So let's start with a relief. Um, obviously it assumes a layer and I'm deleting anything that it assumes. And I'm adding here, it's a, no, it's not this kind of layer. It's a, it's a fill layer. And under project, these are, as soon as you drag in, anything that you've dragged in will show up under the project subsection. So here I can then drag that relief as a base color and drop it. And sure enough, it's applied exactly where it needs to be. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everything else is not needed. So I'm gonna turn off the height, the roughness, the metallic and the normal um, because it doesn't have that information and no point in keeping that. So that would be for the relief. Now let's look at the eyes. The eyes already have a layer. I'm deleting it. I'm adding a fill layer. It's most likely not having height, roughness, metallic or anything, just the color. And I'll drag the eyes here into the base color. And if I come over here, we see the eyes in place. Tell me something. Do you think the white is appropriate here or should the eyes be bigger and the green go right up to the edge? I'm not sure that the uh, anything beyond the iris makes a lot of sense. Right, but... because just white like this will, uh, will look synthetic in the, mm -hmm. yeah, because all of that's gonna be gold afterwards. So that just white like this won't look nice. So what I do uh, is I play with the scaling here. So as I scale it to uh, maybe 1.1, oh, that actually makes it tinier. So 0.9, yep, 0.8 maybe. Yeah, a little bit of Y is not a bad thing. That, that's fine. That looks scary enough. But you can you, you can see that all of that's totally adjustable. You can mm -hmm. you can even rotate the eyes like that. That might fix it if you uh, close to all the way may get rid of that white, but maybe not. Like that. Yeah, something like that. Here. Yeah. yeah. It's fixed here. It's sort of fixed. <laughs> Uh, well, it's just a matter of increasing it, right? Point, mm -hmm. point seven six, yeah, boom. That's it. Okay, so we're starting to to build that hop now. Let's do the sides. Um, Those were certainly the parts I was the most confused about the reference images for. Yes. So, but you see, once once you understand the hierarchy. And uh, uh, that they are all different P uh, FBX files separately, then uh, you 
you can apply different aspects easily. So for the body, the DX1, uh, we're going to turn off everything else except for color. And one should be called DX and one should be called SX. Yeah, so the DX1, I'll drag it on as a base color. And there we go. It painted it nicely oh. here. Now let's do the other side. The SX, delete this, add a new layer, turn off everything else. And I think this is the SX, yes. So we'll drop it under base color and there it is painted. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I, I was trying to figure out how to do the mapping essentially manually because I yeah yeah no, no, this is gonna take a while so uh sometimes yeah it, any situations like this you know call me up and then we can do a we can do a, a little presentation or a little overview and it'll speed up your workflow uh, tremendously but naturally count what we're doing now as 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 training and mark it on your on your sheet of course um okay. because that just happens to accelerate your your learning curve on on this so what have we not done we've done this this we haven't done the pegs we haven't done the relief um we haven't done the head that's the top i think the release is done or the relief on the front. oh yeah yeah we have the pegs we haven't done the pegs so we'll delete this we'll add a layer we'll turn off all of this and then the base color is going to be this wood. And as I drag it in, that looks very nice. Mm -hmm. This wood, yeah. Okay. Um, so the head we're going to leave for the la for last. By the way, it's the same material that wood and up there. So that looks decent as well. That looks very nice. Uh, I've seen that they've economized in polygons here because when you come really close, you can see that it's not a circle. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, we'll, in in the in uh, in the effort of minimizing it, that's okay. Now uh, we've got strings, so let's delete this. Add a layer. The strings is going to be this rope just dragged onto the base color here. So now I can see it, but yeah, it's ugly. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really look like rope. So it can be one of two things. It can be the scaling or the rotation or both. So let's play with the rotation a little bit. As you rotate, it applies the texture At a different angle, but now I'm not Probably convinced. Scaling. So if we scale it, this is too pixelated. If we scale it out and then play with the rotation, it needs to kind of line up perfectly, but Ah, I'm not too convinced about that, but hopefully people played at that length, at that distance and will be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so those were the strings, relief, pegs, eyes, body, top front tube. Now here, we, if we put the wood there, what will it do? No, it's not textured for wood to go there. Oh, it's a rotation issue. So if we start rotating the wood, hmm. no. how about the scaling of the wood that might It looked it like a comp like in the in the reference image it almost looked like the the 
top sort of rod was metallic. Metallic. Okay. In that case, let's put that gold. Uh, and then reset this to one. Oh, I'm just going based off of the uh, the reference image for the side that shows part of the top. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like uh huh. Um. Let me see if I can find it here. It was a downloadable one. Um, I can't find it anymore. Oh, there it is. In this render, it's just a metal rod. Mm -hmm. I'm not convinced that this is what we can we can make a variance on this. Let's Okay, let's try something here. Uh, let's have that as one of the references. Let's have another layer as wood. As their wood, but adjusting it. Possibly with a larger mm. scale. Um, and then let's have another one with some of the textures that uh, uh, that substance has. If it was cloth, how would it look like? So, Notice that as you paint on here, there's some twists, even though the material is a straight uh, object. Mm -hmm. That's because um, the way they've made this is that in the FBX file itself, that it, it is twisted. It is not straight. Uh. Um, so let's put some gold flakes on it and see what it does. Uh, pure gold. The problem with a pure gold is because of those lines. It looks okay in this angle, uh, yeah. but it looks too machined <laughs> from this angle. So let's see, leather would be a uh... okay, yeah, that here it looks okay, but the twist here looks wrong. Okay, how about this leather? How about this? Ah, this may be with a scaling. Okay, how about the rotation? They should have left this just simple rather than <laughs> theoretically we could go back in Blender, delete it, and then put a, a just a regular cylinder there and be done with it. Mm. But nah, from that distance it looks sort of like a leather grip of some sort. Yeah. Oh, at this, at this scale, it does look like straps of leather put together around it. Mm. 
Okay, now can I rotate it so it's, okay, how about offsetting it? You have quite a lot of control to, okay, so this looks like leather uh, strips that they would have added. Uh, let's look at the head, however. Um, so the head, we'll delete this, we'll add. So their original idea was a golden material like this. Right. But this is hardly pretty. No, it's uh, it's a not looking convincing. No. So what we're going to do is go to our own materials and uh, possibly the gold flakes. However, I want to change the scale, the size of the gold leaves. Okay, but then if I turn off certain things, like if I turn off this, those, those breakage in there disappear. Metalness, we definitely need to keep. The roughness, if I turn that off, now I get a more shiny metal. Oh, maybe not. If I turn off the height, then I get, mm. Mm -hmm. something yeah, something much more better. usable with a little bit of impurities in the in the in the gold, which is fine. It shows a little bit of age, but not uh, not that bad. Mm -hmm. Looks nice. So that is totally totally usable. Um, I'm I'm totally fine with that. Um, any point in adding some so that would be a paint layer hmm. it's like bullet hole mm -hmm. Yes, the uh, Babylonian bullets. Yes. Put a leaf on there. Uh, oh, these these are rusty. Yeah, rusty patches. That's almost. <laughs> is that a zipper? <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, a welding a zipper. You can put some welding aspects on it, well, maybe on the side, smaller. I notice that none of this is going to add to the uh, to the polygon count. Mm -hmm. It's already that shape. Yeah. So, and this is just uh, the normal that's going to change, but it's going to make it bumpy. Mm -hmm. Your dad's not going to be very proud of my welding skills mm -hmm. here. You know, it's it's better than my welding with my depth perception. <laughs> Okay, so it, it's yeah, it looks good. Whoops, what did I do here? Oh my! Uh, anyway, let's just delete that whole did layer. It go through. Um, I think I I was just uh, uh huh. Yeah, these are so. Let's add a couple of uh, impure. That's too much. Uh, how do those cracks look?
Well, maybe that's decoration. Hmm. That might look good on the wood, actually, like little nails. Mm -hmm. But uh, not too much. Okay. Uh, rain on it. I haven't got snow. Oh. oh, this flat work on the horn. No, small veins is too big. Okay, we can use some of those vein options on here, but bring down the stroke opacity. So. so there's a size. Little bit of defects on things is uh, gives it that that sense of authenticity. So, for some of these things that are tools that may be used on a daily basis, or rather than the mask which was on the wall and maybe not used all that much, yeah, uh, should we pay more attention to adding defects to the tools? Yeah. Um, especially if it does not take any extra polygons. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it ends up being a normal file rather than a polygon file, then yes. Um, okay. okay. Um, anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and save that file. All those files I'm saving, I'm sending it to you as well, uh, just so you can have as, as, uh, reference so we're going to still call this the powers hub um okay that's saved now i really do not need the fbx file to be exported because i have not modified the fbx file mm -hmm. uh the only thing i need exported is really the texture mm -hmm. i don't want them in png i want them in jpeg eight bit is fine and i'm exporting all of those that's fine and export okay um actually i should create a directory a separate directory just for um powers hop Now let's go ahead and look for those textures that just got exported. Powers hop. Okay, now we do definitely don't need normals for a lot of things. We don't need the bumpiness of certain things. So the body itself. You need base color, correct? Hmm. You mostly just need base color. We only need base color. color. And if you, go, if you go to a normal and you see there's no information there except for static color or in the occlusion, these are not needed. So we'll delete them. Um, so that's the back. Notice how the image here is very different from the original one that, uh, that we downloaded from. Mm -hmm. uh, so that front and back is fine. We don't need those normals. How about the eyes? The eyes is that, the normal for the eye and the occlusion for the eye is not needed. So we'll delete the head base color. We do need the normal. The normal has been our little modification. If we don't include the normal, this will look flat. Mm -hmm. Occlusion, yeah, a little bit of it. Uh, 
the wood itself, there is no, nothing else for the wood, so we'll delete everything else. The relief is just that and nothing else, so we'll delete it. The strings is just the ropes. Yeah. Wow, that's quite an image there. <laughs> yes. Uh, and nothing else. The top front, okay, that's the leather. Um, is there a normal to, oh, there is a normal to it, so it does look bumpy and there is an occlusion to it. So these are the only files we'll need to bring into Unreal, plus the 3D file itself. So it's a matter of just screening what's needed or not. Yeah. Um, okay, so over here, that was under... So the power is half, we move over here and the power is half file itself. And that's it. So we don't need substance anymore. Um, power is half. So we might go back in there and then, uh, you know, the, the red bit of the harp mm -hmm. uh, of the body, we might actually replace that with a piece of cloth um, that gives it a little bit more authenticity, like a piece of carpet or something, because then we'll have the bumpiness in it. And that would need to be done manually in substance. It would uh, need to be, basically you would create a square. Oh no, you can do all of that in Unreal. Unreal has those textures already, so. Okay. Um, yeah. So how do we call our project file today? Um, oh, Dagon Mask. Right, so here is a more complex um, product that we're gonna add in. And um, we need to bring in we need to bring in this the powers hop mm -hmm. plus those textures. So, um, yeah, I typically like to look at it this way, have those file size, I can't go a little bit bigger. So we got the Dagon mass directory in here. Let's create a new directory called um, powers hub. And under powers hub, then we'll drag in the FBX file. Watch, watch what happens now. Uh, size wise, yeah, let's let's leave it at a two to one. Uh, I'm gonna click on import, not import all, just import. And rather than seeing one object, I now have a whole lot of sub objects. Mm. Because you remember we had different layers in uh, right. in substance. These each of them are different FBX files. But uh, the FVX file powers hub.fvx is really a wrapper for all of those. Mm -hmm. I saw with the uh, the Lamsu uh, file that it has it some defaults for assembling it. Yeah. Now, the good thing is that there is a reference file that gives it a coordinate of how it is in relation to each other. So if you select all of them, and you drag it all into here, it's assembled already. Ah, okay. Good to know. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. there's no point in trying to do one at a time because it's never gonna match. Yeah, no. It's, uh, the, the precision's gonna be too hard to, to, to make it work. But yeah, grabbing all of them together, dragging it in, you're done. Um, 
Okay, so now we've got to remember a couple of things. That metallic, well, let's, let's do the body first. Um, okay, for body, it was basically those two images that I just need to bring in. Body DX, body SX. So let's do body DX. Uh, we'll add a new texture. And this needs to be the file with the DX in it. There it is. We'll drag it in as a base color and we'll save it. And it should already apply. Mm. Mm -hmm. Body SX, same thing. We'll delete this. Um, we'll add a texture sample. That was SX, right? So SX, there it is. Dragging in as a base color. Save. And now the other size. Yeah, the other side mm -hmm. is all set. Now, okay, yeah, so as you update that, you will notice that the, that the objects here will update themselves with the right texture. Mm -hmm. um, typically, I like to keep things organized. Um, so I, I would have a texture directory. And uh, all of those JPEGs, I'll drag them in there. Uh, so as not to, to confuse things. Now let's look at the head and I forgot. Uh, now, if you forget which material it is, you just click on the head itself. It will tell you that it's the PBR metallic that it's looking for. So, which is this one. So let's go look for the head. The head had three aspects to it, the base, the normal, and the occlusion. So we'll drag those three in. And then we'll update the PBR metallic to three different textures. And here, Oh, no, not font. I'd like to see it try and map a font. Yeah, it, it'll look weird, but it will, it would do it. Uh, so this is head, uh, head base color. I'll drag that in. And we have two more. So one here and one here. So this one is going to be the head normal that gets dragged to normal. And then the head, okay, <coughs> sorry. So uh, red is occlusion. Green is roughness. Blue is metallic. Mm -hmm. Save. And as we come back, we should see the head looking, looking gorgeous here. Nice. Except for the eyes. How about the defects that we added? Yeah, I can see some of those veins in here. Okay, good. So these eyes, uh, it's the Lira DIUR file. Lira D I U R. By the way, uh, once you're done with these, you can definitely rename them to this was harp head. No point in keeping it in, in its cryptic name there. And it looks like that'll auto remap because it's linked to the material. It is, yes. Yeah. It is. You don't you want to do that after uh e um you don't want to just create a material and expect it to map. Uh, you want it to be linked first and then uh, and then map it later on. So here, 
we can already rename it to eyes uh, because it's already mapped correctly. Um, let's switch over to the eyes and bring the eyes in. These are um, textures that we already done with. So I'll just drag it and move it into that directory so it doesn't uh, confuse me. For this, we just need the texture sample of the eye. There it is, dragged in, save. As we close this, the eye show up just fine now. By the way, if you want to focus something, or if you want to look at that at this um, object, rather than moving your camera around, just hit the F key, and it'll Perfect. and it'll move that to the center. And whatever angle you choose, let's say you're looking straight down, if you press the F key because the other one's selected, it'll look at it from the top. Mm. Okay, thank you. That's good to know. So that's what I did for the eyes. I selected the eyes uh, or the face and pressed F and it zoomed right to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next is those pegs here. Those pegs were wood and that's connected to material 04. Material 04, we're gonna call it wood. So this is harp wood. Uh, the eyes are done. I'll move it into the texture directory. Um, We'll bring in, that's done, the head's done, the peg. Ah, so we need the peg, we need the relief, we need the string, and uh, we need the leather bit here. So we'll just bring all of them in. Okay, so that harp wood, is oh how did i call it oh peg i call it peg there it is yeah looks good and the top as well. Um, the cylinder is made by that and also the PBR Metallic 01, which is this one. We're gonna rename this to, so we gave it a leather texture. Um, let's go ahead and uh, can I drag this in here like this? Oh yeah, that makes it easier. No need to, to search. They just added this in this version. The previous version didn't have it. The dragging? Yeah, just dragging this up. Mm. Um, so this is an occlusion. The next one is metallic. The next one is roughness. There's definitely, there's no metallic anything in it. Yeah, so that kind of looks like a leather handle but anyway you know how to fix it better later on in in substance by tweaking okay the strings the strings are using material 07 now the reason i like to rename it like this is because very, very often when you import new things in it will have generic names like material one. 
and you don't want an object to be using the material of something else. This is what happened to the, to the floor here uh, when we were initially starting the demo. Uh, so this one gets the string. Connected to here. And I think what's using material six. Okay, this up to this, including. Do we do the relief? Oh, we forgot to do the relief. Yeah. I think that is material six. Yes, so this box here uses one part, the DX, one part, the SX, and one part that material six. Mm. Material six is uh, hop and uh, we'll just grab that in here and drive that in. Yeah, that's fine. So that's it for the harp. The harp's done. Nice. Now it would obviously take uh, some blueprints. It's usually the guitar blueprint that I use to assign each of these strings to a particular note. So it, it'll be playable in the game. Very nice. So can you, would you uh, be setting like an NPC to play that by default or would that be something left for the player to figure out yeah it might be for the player to figure out. it might be one la layer of or level of the game where they need to play a particular tune on here to unlock the next level i see um sounds fun so uh but th this depends a lot on the on, on some of the historical research like what is a simple uh, Babylonian style music, um, how would they write it in cuneiform and have the cuneiform writing on the side here and say, okay, uh, play this note. And whenever you hit the right note, the, 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 the cuneiform lights up as green kind of thing. And then it's red until you hit the right note. So it's pretty simple in a game, but it still gives you the, the, the effect of, you know, you, you, you feel like you learned something from the culture. Yeah, that's nice. Well, cool. And again, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I was very lost when I looked at those textures and they did not look anything like the textures from the Lamasu or the Lamsu. Yeah, 